more of a casual talk anyway. Okay. Um, yeah. And so, because it is casual, if you have questions at any time, then go ahead and stop me, and we can talk about them right then. Or if you have suggestions, that's fine too, because um, I might have some Rails 3 holdover code. Um, so everybody should be able to start the app and just keep it running locally. Um, so if you, if you had a chance to look through the GitHub repo, there's a, a master branch which really doesn't have anything on it. Um, this is what you get if you set up the master branch. And then there's three ban branches with slightly more advanced search on each of them. What? Oh, yeah. Sorry. And um, if you pulled it before like 11 p.m. last night, you don't have all the pirates. <laughs> so um, I guess the first thing that we can do, I'll kind of go out of order, um, is you know, usually you talk about things, model view controller. I'm just gonna set up the view first so that we have something to look at. Um, Cause this app is pretty simple. We can just set up the, the view, the search view on, um, on our index page. Um, Yeah, I am typing. I don't know if this is a great format because it's hard for me to talk while I type. Um, but we'll just set up a form tag um, that will allow us to get uh, pirates, which is our, our base model here if you haven't had a lot of time to check out the app. And then here within paragraph, we'll just set up um, a text field and then we'll pass um, search to that text field tag as a symbol. Uh, incidentally, uh, are you guys familiar with better errors? Oh, that's good. Okay. So better errors is a really cool gem that you can pull in that will give you a better error page. Um, I use it in development for all of my apps. I'm in the page 24 seven, so I can't create code work. So yeah, no. <laughs> and, and then the, the best add on there is if you have that and you also install a gem called binding of caller, then wherever your app fails, you get like a, an IRB session in the browser and at that point. Um, super handy. Yeah. Um. It's for me as a silly language. All right, perfect. So now we have this awesome search field. Thank you, Thomas. Um, and anyone is welcome to correct me, please. Um, so now we have this, which our users can see to search, which is helpful, um, but it doesn't do anything. So that's not really helpful. Not that we would find anything. But uh, that doesn't do anything, so that sucks. Um, so let's go to the controller to tell the controller how to behave um, on the search. So right now, we, since we use the index page, we'll update the index. Um, basically do an if else. Okay. Um, so we'll move this, so if there is no um, search, then we'll show all our pirates. If um, we get params, for search, then we'll want to do something else. And um, what we should probably do is updates our, update our pirates to show the ones we're searching for. All right, and so now we'll add the method on the model um, so that we can actually search for something. Um, so just do a self, we'll just do a method on self search and we'll input or we'll accept a query. Um, and then also as part of this, we want to make sure that if um, the user doesn't put anything in search and they hit search, it doesn't search for a blank and try to match against that. Um, it wouldn't, we'll want to check um, if there is a query actually present. So if the, the user doesn't input anything, then there's no query present. So if they hit that search, it'll just refresh and show all of our pirates again. Um, so that it doesn't, it doesn't actually filter for anything. Um, so if we do have a query present, um, we'll do a simple search. Um, 
where name is like something. And so like is an operator that we get from SQL, and it's pretty basic. It just searches for something exactly like it. Um, and then in this situation, we'll do um, these percent signs that I'm going to use will search around uh, whatever our query is. So you'll see when we, oops, um, when we run that in the browser, you'll see that what gets returned. Um, no. Uh, what get, what gets returned will be searches that search around um, the entire word. So, um, for example, please work. Yes. There we go. So this is what I was talking about. If, if they don't input a query, then um, it finds that there's no query present. Uh, these presents here behave, oh, that's very small. Sorry, guys. Uh, behave similarly to, um, and that's very large, how you might expect an asterisk to behave like another search. So if you search bear, you get really anything that contains bear in any capacity, um, such as these instances of beard. And also, the first thing that we did, because this is a very simple search, is, um, sorry, uh, this table only has a couple of columns on it. And this simple search really just searches um, on the name and looks for names that are similar to this one. So that's an extremely basic search. Um, I don't know how much use you'll find for that, but I think it's valuable to kind of um, start with the basics and then build from there. So it only finds uh, it only finds entries where pirates' names are like whatever we pass in as the query or whatever our user passes in as the query right here. Um, so that's good, but so you can do things like search for Blackbeard with that, and you get Blackbeard. But oh, that doesn't get any bigger, does it? If we do this, it doesn't find anything. Because like from SQL is not case insensitive. Um, it's sensitive to case. So it says there are no names like Blackbeard with starting the lowercase b. Um, so this is where Postgres starts to come in. There is a method from Postgres called I like, which is just an insensitive like. So now if we search Blackbeard, he comes up. So you don't have to, your users don't have to be sensitive to what you may or may not have capitalized because how can they know what things you think are a proper noun, right? Because not everyone follows the same rules. Um, so I guess, you know, that's, that's all right. That's pretty good. But um, you're probably thinking, well, there's other pirates here who they have instances, this guy has instances of, of Blackbeard, and you want to know about all pirates who could have anything to do with Blackbeard, not just pirates who are Blackbeard. Um, so we can just add on here um, the, the other columns, which is just as simple as ship, sorry. And the other columns are ship and um, description. All right, so now let's search Blackbeard and see what we get. All right, so now we return uh, two pirates. You have this, you know, Blackbeard, who's your regular Blackbeard, and then you have this Sam Bellamy, who you may not have heard of before because you don't know very much about pirates, and shame on you. Um, but he actually pirated a ship with Blackbeard before, so now you have access to that information. Um, this is. Can you go back to the code where oh, we sorry. changed in the. Yeah. So basically, um, if, if you want to do the search across um, you know, more than one column in one model, really you just add or. So it just finds anywhere that whatever query is presented to it, um, does it find any of them? Um, so that's all right. Um, but really, you can't do things, let's say, You want to know, um, if they have a beard. So how about has beard? It doesn't return anything, but you can see here plainly 
um, you know, this says has beard. But you would like to actually be able to search for that. So what we have right now isn't full text search. It's really just um, each individual uh, part of speech kind of just randomly searched for. And they're not really separated as, as individual thoughts. Um, so now this, this is where Postgres comes in again. Um, and instead of I like, this insensitive like, we'll use this double at operator, which is another um, aspect of Postgres. And what this allows us to do is actually do full text search. All right, so before when we searched for has beard, we didn't find anything and um, I couldn't find that, but now we have, uh, now we can search for two pirates who have a beard. So that's, um, that's kind of nice because now we have, um, we have proper full text search and this, maybe it's not super interesting, but Postgres basically um, with the double at sign goes in and, and splits each thing into its own lexeme, which is just a, an individual kind of part of a sentence um, and then goes back and rebuilds and searches for that. Do you know with like double at, how sophisticated that splitting is? Is it just white space or? I think it's based on white space. That's a good question. I didn't toy around with it that much. Uh, so that's pretty nice. And that works pretty well for this really simple app. But actually, um, to, to really take advantage of all the features Postgres gives you, um, there's a lot more stuff that you can do. But one thing that's pretty simple that I thought was interesting and would be interesting to the most amount of people is um, search with uh, rank. So in in Postgres, what we can do with uh, rank is pretty interesting. It will actually, the lexemes that I talked about, it splits all of the, the parts of your, um, sorry, each, each of these like columns that it searches on, it splits the entries in each column into those individual lexemes and then rates um, how close of a match each total lexeme is against whatever you feed to it as a query. And Postgres does this using um, two methods, or we'll, we'll use them like that, called TS vector. And the TS vector gets put on your, your column entries. And those, you can stop me. No? OK. <laughs> I thought you were giving me an incredulous look. Like, that's unbelievable. Um, <laughs> I refuse to believe that. So sorry. Um, yeah, so then it, it, it ranks your TS vectors against how well they match to the TS query that gets fed in. And so um, that, that just means that we convert um, the query that our user gives us to TS query and we convert uh, the vector that, or, or we convert our column entries to vectors. And um, actually I'm going to cheat a little because there's like a lot of code in this one, and I don't think I can maintain the um, the silence. I don't think I can handle the silence while I type. So I'm just gonna um, what? Oh, I know where there's changes. Sorry. Stash. And that's what we use stash for, which I'll be talking about tomorrow. If you want to hear about that. All right. <laughs> Ta-da. Um, so let's see if I can explain this to you guys again now. Um, so basically in here, we're just setting up our rank. And since it's pretty complicated. It's, it's easier to set it up this way um, across three lines instead of just putting it in one. And so if you also want to cheat and skip ahead, you should have, when you cloned, it should have pulled down all the branches. So you can just switch to branch three, just get CO3, and then it should tab complete for you if you have that set up. Um, have you guys seen this your doc syntax before, the, the capital rank? Yeah, it's it's just a string. It's nothing. The the, the identifier. Listen, listen, and dash anything you want. Yeah. And then it's the same thing for all. I believe so. Pretty much all the weird stuff in Ruby did come from Perl. Anything counterintuitive, <laughs> probably a Perlism. Sorry. No problem. Um, so then, uh, where was I headed? Okay. Yeah, just um, about the ranking. So then we use TS rank, and TS just stands for text search because these are 
um, methods from Postgres. And Postgres actually has very good documentation. So if you're working on this and you haven't really used Postgres before, I would recommend checking out their docs. Um, not every tool that you use has such good docs as Postgres. Um, so then we just import our column names here to TS Vector. So that splits up the column entries into those individual lexemes so that they can be searched against. And then we convert our TS query, um, the query that we're presented from the user, we just convert that to TS query. And I, I can't remember why now I chose to use the plain. I can't remember now why. Um, why I chose to do that, sorry. And, and then now we have like the same, the same syntax, although this one doesn't have ship on it. Or ship. Um, we use the same syntax, um, check it against the query, which we've converted to the TS query, and then order it based on rank descending. So whichever has, the, the rank is a kind of a match value. So whatever has the highest match value, that'll be displayed first. So is this actually building a full text search index, this, this step? Is, is it building the index? Yeah. Um, I think, I mean, it doesn't build like a permanent index. I think it gets built, like it gets indexed right. when you search. It's not, um, your database doesn't, I don't think your database becomes like permanently indexed. Is that what you're asking? Okay. Uh, it just didn't seem like the last search methods were actually indexed. They were not. Yeah. That's so true. So this actually indexed. Yeah. Okay. And then I guess my follow-up question is, is there a way to like set your own weights? There is. I'm not going to get into it, but there is a way um, to do that. And if you want someone to walk you through it, the Railscast will walk you through it. Um, but like I said, the Postgres docs are really good. The only thing is the Railscast is for Rails 3.2 maybe. Um, but that's going to be, you'll know what it is that is deprecated or anything like that because it'll spit an error at you. Um, sorry, should I? Are you sure the rank part? Oh, sorry. Yeah, so then you just order it um, on the rank match by descending. So you, you can set weights for these. I didn't, for this, I didn't know how crazy this was going to be, so I didn't want to overcommit and like throw up on everybody, literally. So the, sorry, uh, the plain two bit is just about adding in like ands. Oh, that's right, yeah. So. Um, it the plain two takes out stop character or stop terms. Is that what it calls them? Stop words. Stop, stop, stop words. words. Like parts of speech, like the end. Yeah. Okay. Common words. I think it's very structural. Um. So. No, real quick. This is just searching, and then it's the same search as before, but now I don't rank. Terms. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah. So now this is basically the same search as before, but um, all it's doing that's different is just ranking the results. And let's see. Do we have? I don't know. I guess we could search Blackbeard again. Although that's not very good because that's how it showed it to us last time because the name was first. Um, this database doesn't have really anything great for displaying the rank. Uh, now the rank is just your search for um, your sort condition. When you search yes. for beard, I'm about to give you a couple. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it does. It does return these two. Uh, well, no, because that's. Does it rank, I mean, they both have beard in them. Does it rank the first one higher because there are fewer non-beard words, essentially? That may be it. That would be a reasonable goal. That would be a reasonable assumption to make, but this is not a very yeah. sophisticated search app, and it doesn't have a very sophisticated database um, to work on. 
but it wouldn't um, it wouldn't actually return Redbeard because it doesn't see um, here it doesn't really see beard as a separate part of Redbeard. It just sees that all as one word. Okay. Um, so you can import dictionaries with this, which is really helpful. So you could import an English dictionary, um, but if the English dictionary didn't recognize Redbeard as um, you know something that contains beard, because uh, you know if you searched like bear now, it doesn't come back with anything because you're thinking I want to work, you know I want to work with a pirate who works with bears because I have a bear. So it's very important to me that this pirate is bear friendly. Absolutely. Yeah, obviously. Um, you know, now you don't find anything. You're not misled like earlier on our simpler search where Redbeard comes up and you say, perfect, me and my bear are gonna go join Redbeard's um, crew of dead pirates because they are very long dead. Um, so now the search is more accurate for that, but because of this, like, it doesn't pick up as Beard as a separate part of Redbeard. Okay. What, um, what dictionary stuff does it have out of the box? Like, does it do suffix matching? So like Beard, Bearding would both return with different um, I'm not sure what the English dictionary has. Uh, there's a simple dictionary which allows for some things like that, but I got the impression from Postgres uh, docs that simple is not as highly recommended as a language specific, or um, you can import your own if you have a dictionary that you've written that you are fond of and you think that people who search your sh site should adhere to. Um, but that's, in a nutshell, very basic simple search with Postgres um, and simple rank search with Postgres. This is, um, you know, by no means like the end all be all, like I said, uh, the Railscast on full text search with Postgres is really good, um, but Elasticsearch is even better. Do you want to tell everyone about Elasticsearch? Yes. Um, let me bury the screen has the thing So I guess while we're doing this, any questions or anything? Oh, yeah. Any other questions? I did have one more. Sorry. All right. Um, I'm trying to answer it. Does it do like filtering by, by rank? So like if it has less than some rank, don't show it? Um, yeah, that would, I think that would be a specific... Is it a numeric score that it computes somehow, or is it just a random game? Yeah, it is a numeric score. Okay. Um, so. Is that Z shell or? Yeah. There is a thing that will look at your commands and automatically prefix them with bundle exec if they are things that probably ought to be bundle exec. Okay. Yeah, it's one of the plugins that I think ships with OMICSH. I, I've had mixed results with it, so I'm not wholeheartedly endorsing it, but it's out there. I got rid of it because I actually wanted to not bundle exec things. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. No, I just see that? <laughs> um. So this is, this is a query I was running for practice. Um, let's see. Okay. So it doesn't find, um, it doesn't find that because it doesn't recognize beard as a separate part of speech in red beard when you have it in English. So here's one that searches, and it's it's just a TS vector on one string there, but you can add to all more strings in and search against them. Um, and so then, which obviously it's not very good ranking because it's only ranking on one row that it's searching, but it does it does calculate um, a mathematical value based on how relevant that algorithm thinks that 
uh, vector matches the query. Okay. Anything else? Cool. Uh, you want to decast that, and I'll. This video has been sponsored by Rietta Incorporated. Learn more today at rietta.com.